What's up YouTube? This is LDS Reliance. All right, I'm pissed off at this thing. This is the, I'm gonna do another video of this uh, mini dorm fridge running off of solar. But first we gotta figure out what the heck is going wrong with this thing. And uh, so I brought out the big guns. I've got two uh, deep cycle marine batteries here, uh, wired in parallel to provide plenty of amps. Um, and I've got some various test equipment here so we can figure out what is going on. So um, <clears throat> we've got our uh, multimeter here that I'm going to check and make sure that the voltage is not getting too low. And then I've got this kilowatt meter uh, that's going to tell me uh, how many amps or how many uh, watts it's drawing um, so that I make sure that I'm not exceeding the capacity of this, of this inverter. So let's test this out and see what happens. I've got everything uh, wired up here. And so I'm going to turn this on and we'll try to figure out what's going on here when this, actually I'm gonna unplug this thing first so we can make sure that we're up and running and stable. So let me pull that out. Okay, I'm gonna turn on the inverter here. So I don't know if you're gonna be able to see the screen there, but let's switch it to, got it switched on watts. And so we're drawing, uh, for some reason, we're drawing about one watt. I guess that must be for the kilowatt itself. But anyway, let's go ahead and take this and plug it in and see what happens and watch this in real time here. Okay, so that happens too fast to even see anything that's happening. So we still don't know whether it's pulling too many watts for this inverter to handle or whether it's dropped the voltage too low. This fault uh, alarm doesn't really give a, tell us a story. So let's move on to checking the, the voltage with our uh, multimeter. Okay, so we've got 12.5 volts coming from the batteries, which is good. So hopefully I can do this with two hands, but let me switch on the uh, inverter and see how this. Okay, so the lowest it gets is 12 volts, which is still well within the acceptable range for an inverter to run. So that's not, that's clearly not the case. So it must be pulling too many watts for this thing. Now this thing says it's 400 watts continuous, 800 peak, but uh, I'm very skeptical of the 800 watts peak. So let's, uh, let's move on to some more powerful inverters and check those next. Okay, so we've got this Xantrex uh, inverter uh, plugged in. It's a more powerful inverter. It's a 600 watt. Uh, it's also a pure sine wave inverter, and it should be able to handle a little bit higher of a surge. Uh, I don't remember the specs on this one, but uh, usually they can handle about double the wattage that they're rated for in a surge uh, situation. So we've got, uh, this one's nice because it actually tells me the volts and the amps right on the front, so we don't have to mess with the multimeter. And so we've got our... Uh, our uh, kilowatt meter plugged in here so let's see what happens when we when we plug this in okay so it's still it says EO4 fault so I'm gonna have to look that up and see what what exactly that is Okay, so we've got our last hope here. This one is literally twice as powerful as this one. It's 1200 watts. It's a good reputable brand. Um, it looks really well built and I, I think I'm gonna do a review on this or some, some further testing on this unit because this is the first time I've actually opened it and used it. Um, I was a little worried uh, about the gauge of the wires that I've got coming off my battery. Um, so that, that's going to be the next thing that I, that I test, but I'm hoping that this thing will work. So we've got 12.44, I don't know if you can read that, 12.44 uh, volts on our battery bank. And uh, so let's find out what happens when we plug this, this thing in. 
hopefully for the last time. And let's see, hopefully we can see the gauge here and we can look in real time as we plug this in. Oh, it's working. <clears throat> you can't hear it on the video, but the motor kicked on. I heard it, heard it running. The refrigerator is, I mean, it's not cold yet, obviously, but it is running. And we've got um, just under two amps that this thing is pulling. Let's see. So 137 watts. That's about what it should be should be pulling at all times when it's when it's running. Yeah, that's about what it's rated for is about an amp and a half um, in continuous mode. So anyway, awesome. Finally, we got a result here. Um, yeah, so we figured it out. We had to overkill this thing a little bit. I'm, I'm really surprised that I had to go to a 1200 watt inverter to get this tiny little thing. I mean, you, you see what, what watts it's pulling right now. I mean, I would have thought that a 400 watt with an 800 watt burst, uh, you know, surge capacity could handle this because it only draws 140 some watts, 150 watts under a normal load. I would have thought that a 400 watt cheapy inverter would be able to handle that, but uh, it just has to draw so much power when it starts up that you really have to run a big a big inverter so that's kind of surprising anyway we solved the problem um, I'm gonna put this under the Willet Solar series as the third video on this uh, mini dorm fridge thing here but uh, obviously we're not working with solar today I just wanted to solve this problem and uh, maybe <clears throat> maybe later I'll figure out how to definitively test this thing with solar and uh, in, instead of just testing it running it off battery power. Anyway, thanks for watching guys and uh, I'm glad that we were able to get this figured out.